Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Ken Smith and today's video is all about the Ford Ferguson tractor. You're going to get some insights in how it is manufactured and some viewpoints of the assembly line as well as some testing out in the field. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you get your copy of Rust Buckets. I'll put a link down in the description. So let's get into today's video. Behind the new Ford tractor with Ferguson system lies a vast industrial empire, the great plant of the Ford Motor Company at River Rouge. This is where the tractor begins, where an oft-repeated belief of Henry Ford is at last taking tangible form that industry and agriculture must depend on one another if either is to survive. From the far corners of the earth, Ford boats carry cargoes to the great factory at River Rouge. Iron ore, the precious and plentiful material upon which industrial enterprise is so dependent. Here it is taken in the maw of a giant scoop and placed in the huge storage bins to await the raging inferno of the blast. <laughs> then placed in a container and sped 1,600 feet through a pneumatic tube from the foundry to the spectrographic laboratory. The sample is polished and subjected to a 40,000 volt spark. The light from the spark goes through a tube to a spectrographic camera in the adjoining dark room. The light is broken up into rainbows by the spectrograph and the lines each element forms are photographed. The rainbows look like this when their pictures are taken, but those little lines tell the metallurgists a big story. Each of the lines means something. Samples are matched against master spectrographs. By doing this, the exact amount of each element in the alloy can be determined. Just eight minutes from the time the sample is received, the laboratory's report is back in the foundry. The foreman may then order the addition of any elements needed to keep the proportions of each element in the alloy precisely correct. Here tractor crankshafts are being cast. The molten alloy steel is poured into molds in which four crankshafts are cast in a cluster. Here molds for the rear end castings are being formed. It is a highly simplified design, strong and trouble free. From the foundry, the rough castings go to the machine shop, where they are machined and finished. This great multiple spindle machine drills the crankshaft for pressure lubrication of connecting rod bearings, four holes at a time in just a few seconds. The grinding of crankshafts is typical of many operations, where split hair precision is the first rule. Tolerances are only five ten thousandths of an inch. But Ford standards are unusually exacting, so crankshafts are placed in polishing machines, where surfaces are made so smooth that they must be measured in millionths of an inch. These infinitesimal variations are gauged by the incredible device you see here, the profilometer. Dials that tell an amazing story of precision finishing, gleaming surfaces so uniformly smooth that the old enemy of moving engine parts, friction, is held to a minimum right from the start. The X-ray, as everyone knows, has given physicians a powerful new instrument in the diagnosis of human ills. The same instrument, only much more powerful, is used for selective tests of tractor crankshafts. By means of X-ray photographs, the engineers are able to study the internal structure of actual parts. Thus, science plays another important role by ensuring the highest quality in parts for the Ford tractor with Ferguson system. Another factor that contributes to good performance and low upkeep, the use of hardened liners in the cylinder bores. These sleeves make the cylinder walls extremely wear resisting because they are much harder than the engine block. Another feature of quality construction, the use of tungsten steel inserts in all valve seats, both exhaust and intake, to retard wear and promote efficient valve operation. The inserted seats are carefully gauged for roundness. The transmission gears are tested for quiet in sound insulated rooms. The complete assembly is attached to an electrically driven drive shaft, while an inspector shifts the gears and listens with a sensitive sound detection instrument. Here the distributor is being assembled. The gauging operation shown here checks the alignment of the shaft. On the engine, the distributor is driven directly by the camshaft, 
simplified design that eliminates intermediate gears. Few things are taken for granted in the manufacture of the Ford tractor with Ferguson system. No matter how carefully a part is designed, no matter how closely the machines approach perfection in their work, testing and inspection are constantly carried on, as seen here with the ignition coil. The function of this machine is to measure the output of the coil. And by the way, the coil has a peak output of 24,000 volts. Here you see the assembly of one of the tractor's distinguishing features, the hydraulic pump from which comes the power to control the unit implements. The pump is extremely simple in design and highly efficient. It works on the eccentric principle, the stroke of the pistons being provided by the movement of the yokes with which they are integrally cast. Again, the ever-recurring test operation. The pump is placed in a deep pan of oil, a drive shaft is attached, and the pistons begin their swift pumping action building up the pressure that soon will become power at the farmer's fingertips. Although normal pressure requirements will never be so high, the pump is tested at pressures ranging up to 2,000 pounds. It must be quiet, too. Extraneous sounds are transmitted by a delicate instrument to the inspector's ear. Power sometimes comes in small packages, and it may be hard to realize that this compact, simply designed hydraulic pump can handle such big loads but this picture should convince anyone. Ring gears, too, must be able to withstand terrific pressures, and here is a tractor gear that's about to sacrifice a tooth in the cause of science. But what resistance it puts up! The machine is capable, of course, of exerting far more pressure than the gear would ever have to take in actual work. The pressure goes up to more than 35,000 pounds before the tooth gives way. As in the case of the crankshaft, accuracy of engine parts is held to extremely fine limits and inspection for precision as well as for strength gets a great deal of emphasis in the Rouge plant. All vital engine parts, not just occasional samples but all of them, are gauged in rooms like these near the point of production. The gauges, of course, must be extremely accurate and to make sure that they stay that way, the rooms are air conditioned lest temperature changes affect the precision. Ford gauges take a great many forms and some are truly to be marveled at. The piston pin inspection machine, developed and built by the Ford Motor Company, is an outstanding example. It's hard to believe, but this machine can detect differences in piston pin diameters of 25 millionths of an inch. This machine also checks each pin for smoothness, hardness, roundness, length, straightness, and diameter, then sorts the pins into a five-compartment container according to size. It automatically gauges and sorts piston pins at the rate of 2,250 per hour. Here's another ingenious inspection machine. The bouncing rings are valve seat inserts, and only the perfect rings bounce into the container. If a ring lacks hardness or is cracked, or if it's off sides, it automatically falls into the discard pile. More than 38,000 precision gauges are in regular use in the production departments of the Rouge plant. To make sure they stay accurate, they are checked at least once a day against Johansson gauge blocks, recognized as the industrial standard of linear measurement. Testing methods at the Ford plant go beyond tests of materials and parts. Now and then a tractor is run off the assembly line and put through a real rough and tumble workout. This is concentrated punishment for any piece of farm equipment. Stresses and strains equal to many hours of work under normal conditions. Of course, this tractor is not for sale. It is torn down to see how well it stood the gaff. The three basic tractor operations are the manufacture and assembly of the engine, transmission, and the rear axle. Motor buildup begins with the manufacture of camshafts, crankshafts, connecting rods, and pistons, which are later to join the motor block in motor assembly. The motor block, which is received from vendors, is machined in our own plant. Typical of the machining operation is the automatic procedure in which the cylinder walls are diamond bored. The assembly of the tractor motor is similar to the automobile motor assembly. Camshaft, valves, crankshaft, pistons, and a multitude of other motor parts are fit snugly together in an orderly, continually moving process. 
and as in the case of all of our operations, under the watchful, discerning eye of quality control. Every motor is checked for 15 minutes under the most rigorous operating conditions. The tractor engine is also marketed as a portable industrial engine by parts and accessories. It is used extensively in farming operations and throughout the industry. Besides the motor block, the other heavy cast iron parts which are manufactured at Highland Park are the center axle housing, transmission housing, cylinder head, and the flywheel. Other pre-assembly manufacturing operations are the cutting of transmission gears and forming of the transmission main shaft. Moving on into axle assembly, we see the axle being inserted into the cast steel housing where it merges with the gears which are received from the rouge. The brake band is fixed and the ring gear is inserted into the center housing next to the pinion gear. The axle housing is then hoisted and placed on the center housing. In this intricate sub-assembly operation, we build the aluminum pump which controls the all-important tractor hydraulic lift. After hundreds of sub-assembly and manufacturing operations are performed by approximately 1,500 employees in our compact plant, the tractor suddenly begins to take form. This interesting transformation occurs at what we call the buckle-up, where the transmission is sandwiched in between the axle housing and the engine to form the body of the tractor. The tractor grows as the front axle comes in on a reserve conveyor and is assembled to the center axle. Next, the hydraulic lift, which is also built here in sub-assembly, is lowered into position on top of the center housing. Another sub-assembly, the steering mechanism, is lowered into position. Hydraulic oil is put in the transmission. The wheels are aligned, rear fenders set, batteries are inserted, and the hood assembly is locked over the engine in this manner. The front wheel is mounted to the spindle and the rear wheel with its huge tire mount is lifted into position. The finished tractor is gassed and driven off under its own power. At present, 372 of these vehicles are turned out each day by the 500 employees on this line. At peak, we were producing 500 a day. Tractors are shipped in specially equipped freight cars. 14 to a car. Ford tractors are marketed by the Dearborn Motors Corporation through 3,000 tractor dealers. Many of our Ford automobile dealers also sell the Ford tractor. Ford is a pioneer in the tractor business. Years of experience have taught our people how to build the most for the least. Our engineers and research people are continually making studies to determine the requirements of the farmer and other tractor customers. These vehicles are built to meet their standards. Evidence of their power and versatility and all around effectiveness is seen daily at the testing grounds at Cherry Hill, which is operated by the Ford Motor Company's engineering division. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Have a wonderful day and you all be blessed.